My guest today is uh, Danny Antonucci. Welcome to the show, Danny. It is good to meet you. Hey, Victor. How are you? I'm very good. He has been an animator for many years of his life, and uh, a lot of people know you best. What would you say from Ed, Eddie, Ed, Ed and Eddie? Yeah, I guess Lupo kind of started it all. I remember Lupo seeing Butcher, that. But yep. uh, yeah, I guess Ed and Eddie was the last thing I ever did, and um, apparently it's still cooking in some form or fashion, and so... It's fine. It's all good. That was uh, on a dare, I heard, that you uh, created it was, a kid's it was, show because you had a lot of, done a lot of violent stuff in your career. <laughs> well, it, not violent, but adult. I always tried yeah. to stay within the adult f- mindset of animation. At that time, there wasn't a lot of it around. And I still um, look at all the sort of... Uh, "Quote unquote golden age of uh, era of animation, be it the Warner Brothers, Tex Avery's, the MGM's, all of those that they are all originally made for adult films and right. so our adult theaters. That I was always kind of into that world. Nickelodeon started phoning me up to these two fellows from there who were doing developing for them, and they wanted me to do a kids show for them. Um, I kept hanging the phone up on them <laughs> and saying no." F you, I don't do kids stuff. And they were determined month after month after month. And so I just literally sat down and and came up with some sort of weird kind of one sheet of uh, premise characters and a quick kind of run of what the show would be about. Uh, And they went crazy over it. And and, um, with that, I thought, hmm, that's interesting. I wonder what... Linda Siminski. Linda Siminski is a, a good friend of mine, and she and and I'm sure that Bill knows her as well. Yeah, uh, she's over at PBS now. She does kids work there, but she used to work for Cartoon Network. Uh, she and I sent it to her, and I said, "What do you think of the show?" And she said, "I want to see more. Don't give it to anybody." So oh, it was like, nice. "What?" Nice. So we got into that kind of scenario. Yeah. And then Cartoon Network ended up getting it. That's so. wonderful. There, yeah. there was, uh, you know, I don't want to say that it's over, but there was this kind of like a golden age of hand-drawn animation. Yeah. Uh, sort of in the 80s and 90s, especially, I think, through partnerships through MTV and, and through networks that, like, like Viacom owned networks. Yeah. felt like people were into edgier stuff, Beavis and Butthead. Oh, there was. And, then, and again, I think that goes with this whole movie, the Spike and Mike show, yeah. or the Outlaws, Animation Outlaws, uh, that um, there was this whole troop of people trying to expound on the golden era mm-hmm. of animation. Um, and we tried. We pushed and pushed and pushed, you know. Yeah. Um, You're still doing it, though. You're still creating animation, or are you hanging up your hat I'm, for a No. I, well, you, it's impossible to hang up your hat. But yeah. but it is a thing of that I'm a little bit less aggressive about it. Yeah. Um, it really depends on who uh, the executives are yeah. in, within the world of animation, because you usually have to go and pitch or talk to these people that are in, in, in that world. Yeah. I think we've had a, a time or a period in in network animation where uh, there's very little vision going on. Yeah. And so I'm taking a little bit of a backseat because I don't want to waste my time talking to people who have absolutely no idea about what creativity is about. I so. know that very well. <laughs> okay. it, it, because because it, you know what it is, it's just the, there's just so much, I think, is what it is. And I think I don't envy anybody in that green light position to make a decision about anything right now because there's so many things. But do you think, I think if you if if someone is in that position and has a responsibility to have some sort of vision. They should be a curator, right? Yes. Exactly. Yes, yeah. Someone should be able to say, this is something that needs right. uh, either uh, exposing or uh, least touching on and, and being a ground or a stepping stone for another show or whatever that Absolutely. that should always be happening and it hasn't been yeah we're all about regurgitation yeah and uh, and I feel sorry for anybody who's trying to get into animation or loves animation or you know wonders about the magic quote unquote of animation yeah that um it's kind of a sad period right now, okay. I feel, yeah, personally. Well, I, I think that's great that you're sharing that. And you're actually in town for the uh, for the Spark FX and the Spark Animation yes. Festival that's yeah. here. Yeah. And so you've got panels, and you're talking about animation uh, outlaws? Yeah, I yeah. think sun- Sunday we have a panel with, of course, Bill Plimpton. Yeah. I think Kat um, will be here, who directed the, the feature, and also uh, Marv Newland, who is probably one of the original Vancouver uh, ass-kickers in animation. Um, 
fuck, who else is on that panel? Do you remember who else is supposed to be on that panel? <laughs> um, but anyway, so there, yeah, so it'll be interesting. It'll be very, very, very interesting. Well, it's it's uh, you know a remarkable period, and I remember I I mean I based my production out of Vancouver, and yeah. I grew up, and I remember hearing about Rocket Ship, and yeah. I've heard your name a ton of times. I remember seeing Lupo the Butcher at Spike and Mike's. Mm -hmm. Who are Spike and Mike? Are, the, are they actual two people? Or yeah, yeah. They, <laughs> they are. Yes. Uh, unfortunately, Spike's or uh, Mike's not with us anymore. Oh, okay. Um, uh, but Spike is still out there kicking it in some form or fashion with his wind-up dolls and cows and everything else. <laughs> um, there are these two fans. I think they would. They really did start off as uh, insane fans of animation. Yeah. Who who kind of had an agenda to uh, create a traveling animation festival in, of sorts. Yeah. And so they would find all us independents in our little hovels and holes that we hide in when we're doing our work and, uh, and expose our work, play our work, you know, to, the, to all of, at least at that time, it was just all of America. Yeah. I know that they did make some sto stepping stones into Canada, Vancouver being one. I'm not sure what they did on the East Coast. Yes. Uh, but um, I went to them at the Ridge Theater all the time oh, here yeah, in Vancouver. Yeah, over at the Ridge, yeah. man. Um, uh, uh, Ridge always has a great place in my heart because they premiered Lupo. That's right. Um, but yeah, they, they exposed everybody from students to um, whoever wanted to see animation, they exposed them to all this great independent work. Now, are you a fan of the, the, the computer-generated animation stuff that's been happening? There's been some leaps and bounds, like, uh, you know, the Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse was made here in Vancouver. Are you a fan of that stuff, or do you prefer the traditional uh, hand-drawn stuff? Uh, I, uh, when it comes to that, like Spider-Man or whatever, uh, effects, um, um, video games, uh, that whole world, I, I'm fine with it. Yeah. But when you start taking... Um, uh, artists like like right now things that are really pissing me off right now yeah, are the right Adams here. family yes. that it's coming out yeah. which I think is horrible because they ruined Chaz Adams uh, designs and drawings on that mm. and uh, the peanut stuff how the you know it's like you're you're turning everything into puppet shows right. that have absolutely no identification right. in style or right. design right. or anything and just turning it into a commodity. Uh, you yeah, know, dollars and cents. I totally agree. With you. It, it's a it's a uh, a proven one. You know, people looked at the success of Pixar, and it really felt to me that so many other studios said, "Let's just kind cut, of yeah. cut, you know, cut and paste that into, yep. and literally cut and paste a lot of the design ideas." Yep. And yeah, we need some shakeups there too, right? Oh, totally. Yeah. Like get away from the software. Become yeah. an you know, if you're gonna be an artist and you want to do art, yeah. Be an artist, yeah. you know, get out, get out of the software thing. I mean, because the software will never imitate your brain for imagination or creativity. Yes. And so do something interesting. You've worked with um, some contract work along the way. And, and I, have you done like music videos and things like that at all? Or <sighs> I'm trying to remember if I did. Or commercials or? Well, yeah, I did do rock. When I was working at Rocket Ship, we did. And maybe this is something even Marv Newland now we can bring up, Bill, is we did a video, music video for Pia Zadora. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that was all hand-drawn and stuff, so yeah. that was kind of fun. Well, I'm wondering if that, you know, because it's kind of like you're working in partnership with something or some yeah. brand. Is that a freeing thing? They trust you to the, envision their stuff in, in there your was, style. There, they knew when they would come to us for something yeah. that they were coming to us for a reason, not to try to mold us or shape us into something they want. Right. They're coming to us because of us. Right. That doesn't really happen anymore. Yeah. It's very, very rare. I mean, now you've got writers who are doing animation, mm -hmm. and it's like half the half the bloody animated TV shows are are all writer shows yeah. or or comedians now being animation people. Right. Please go back to your thing, whatever you do, stay out of the animation. How did you get that inspiration? How did you get that literal spark? How did, how did it sort of come to you that you wanted to do this? When I was a kid, uh, I think looking at a lot of Fleischer cartoons uh, stuff, when I was yeah. a kid. Yeah. Uh, and then even with the uh, Warner Brothers, um, not so much Disney, even though early on, I mean, obviously as a kid, I probably would have been influenced by that. Yeah. But I always got 
pulled in because I couldn't understand how did they make their drawings move. Mm. And to me, I found that to be the trigger. And so that's how I learned. I just learned how do I get my th sketch yeah. to go over there and pick up a glass of water or something, you know? We were talking a little bit before we started rolling here that we're in this era where everybody has these magical pieces of technology and it's like people can animate on an iPad right. and be quite effective with right. it, use a stylus or whatever. What do you say to the up and comers out there that, that uh, you know, relish the purity of animation and, and now have distribution as a potential? And we do hear that story sometimes where people animate something and then they get brought on board or something gets developed into something else. Um, I would say to always stick to your guns. Uh, I would never take no for an answer. And, and, and also, uh, this is something I've always had on my shirts from the studio and everything else is yeah. fuck digital and draw. Yeah. <laughs> right on. You know, yeah. that's, that's basically it. So draw, even avoid the iPads and the styluses and all I that would, uh, I'll learn, learn about the bite of paper, learn about different types of lead, learn about what an ink or a brush can do to your lines and, and how they actually move and boil to create a life of their own. Yeah. Uh, learn about, um, beautifully rendered backgrounds and, and gouache and, and watercolors, because these all create moods and... And, uh, and we're emulating them with our software, right? Exactly. Yes. And now all we're doing, to, and which cracks me up too, is yeah. that uh, you've got these insane studios like Pixar and everything else, and they always go, yeah, it's, it's so close to two-dimensional, you won't even know the difference. <laughs> and it's like, well, what, you're spending all these millions upon millions of dollars <laughs> to imitate what we did all the time yeah. on a nickel and a dime, yes. you know? Yeah. So it's, you, could, it's a weird scenario. I guess it won't ever go back because we're No, in, I doubt it will. But there's room for it to thrive again. Just like, this, you know, Sony shook things up with Into the Spider-Verse with digital we could shake it up with hand-drawn stuff again. Now, remember, we're only speaking North American. Yeah. So because Europe is still a, a magical uh, breeding ground for animation, right. very much in, in, in classical and everything else, it's a, the North American attitude of everything has just gone to hell and high water. Vancouver used to be such a great independent uh, animation community, yep. and now it's like every other dime a dozen studio, uh, studio town where... Everybody's just doing stuff for other people. Well, this has become an animation hub and a, a visual effects hub, so there's a lot of people employing people. In <laughs> hub it, is right? a nice word, yeah. but yes. <laughs> <laughs> Danny, it's wonderful to meet you. What do people uh, look forward to? Have you got something in the pipeline that uh, people can either see you well, in? Well, I probably shouldn't say anything. Let's say that there are people interested in Lupo again. Cool. And so uh, we've been, we're in talks, talking about all that kind of stuff. Awesome. Which is fine by me, yeah. you know? Yeah. Whatever, let's have fun. That's, that's great, man. It's really nice to meet Cheers. you. Cheers. All right.